Hello, this is Brendan, Brendan Schumacher, and here we are again with another episode on designing the book cover for a comic. So I'm designing a book cover, it's a very simple book cover. Um, I might have even predicted this many, many videos ago, I'm thinking. I have weird thoughts like that sometimes, but yeah, that um, this is a black, very simple cover, black uh, background with white text on it, and there's a reason for that. But uh, let me just state first what we're doing here. I have the cover page open in GIMP. The uh, <clears throat> This would be like the forward or the about page. Um, I'm actually going to give you a name for that in a minute. And here is uh, like an introduction page. And there's other types of pages that we can put in the beginning of a book. But let's just ramble on a bit about why we do this and some uh, some practices to do with it. So um, on the home page here is very simple, which I like um, because it's minimalist, right? It's minimalist. That doesn't mean I want all of my book covers to be like this, but it was just uh, well, it was nice. It saved me a lot of work, and I just liked the way that it looked when I did that. And it has a bit of uh, mystery about it, and it also goes very well along with the theme which is based on this game Dwarf Fortress uh, which is actually you know if you zoom in here it kinda has this type of look to it if you never played the game then uh, then you know well you can look at that it just has these symbols that are on a black background it's kind of like uh, if you imagine a game that was designed for the old black and white terminals where you have a black screen and green text or something like that um, but obviously it's a lot more complicated so um, yeah, that I thought this would, would just work, and so I did it. It's my idea. And you have the name there. That's something you want to have. And you want to have the name of the artist, or, you know, there's a comic book, so the name of the, the creator, the publisher, whatever it might be. And uh, this is not a subtitle down here, but just sort of a sub-note based on the game Dwarf Fortress. That's important information for the cover of this book, because I hope anybody who likes... Uh, Dwarf Fortress would want to pick up the book and give it a read. And then of course we have the obligatory uh, copyright statement. Now a quick thing on this with the copyrights. Most people know the law in America, that's only America, is to say that uh, anybody who's created something uh, just automatically owns it and you cannot just steal other people's work and ideas. Now this gets tricky in art sometimes because if uh, if somebody had the idea to draw a circle and I also drew a circle and and tried to sell the circle then obviously it would be hard to make a copyright claim over that but it's safe to say that when you have a, a very complicated and unique idea such as this whole story and each and every one of the drawings that I made for each page you cannot just copy that and then go uh, try to sell it maybe you could copy it uh, you shouldn't even copy it at all. You could probably copy it, put it on your computer, but you shouldn't try and sell it. And technically, you shouldn't even try and share it because that's not, uh, I don't want people to do that. Um, it's my work. By sharing it with people for free, you detract from uh, my value and my, uh, you know, any earnings or, or stuff that I should get out of that. So that's not good. Um, so that's the, the home page, a little bit about copyright stuff. And then we go into here. And this is, I actually brought up a, um, let me see if I can find it, a book design. I thought it was a good place to make sure I had the right word. Go to Wikipedia, they have book design. It goes way back like hundreds, if not thousands of years, that people put covers on books. And nowadays, a lot of people th might think that, oh, you don't really need that because, you know, it's just dive into the story. But think about the difference, uh, really, between having a cover like this to start to look at and then to go into a quick about page like this and then finally to start getting into the reading and the action and stuff it's just like a, a movie doesn't have to have credits or you know a title in the beginning but don't you really feel like it's so much more official when you do that it just uh, it lets you know that you're in the right spot and makes you feel safe what if I'm reading five pages into this and I start to think wait is this the right book <laughs> I forgot which book I was reading you just want to confirm all of that stuff and give credit where credit is due right makes everything proper so um, that's stuff to do and I want to make sure that I had the uh, the right names here and as I call it book design here book design by Wikipedia you have a title page 
which repeats the uh, the title and the author name. And you can even get inspiration by looking at this. Some of this stuff I never heard of. Uh, colophon. I can zoom in here a bit for the smaller screens. Right? Colo colophon. I don't even know what that is. For the that's for the printer. Let's see uh, all the technical information, the copyrights and that stuff. Yeah, I don't need that. I could. I guess it'd make it look more official. But uh, yeah, it could be like digitally printed and all that stuff. Um, but this stuff I'm interested in the dedication. Uh, epigraph contents could be useful later on. Right now I only have one chapter, but it would be pretty cool later on if I had some contents in there. And this gives a, a bit more meaning to the whole work itself when you think about it. When I started thinking about a dedication, I was like, hmm, maybe I should dedicate it to someone. That makes the work a bit more meaningful. Uh, helps me to have some motivation. So that's that. Um, and let me see what else we have here. The the Bastabak. Uh, second one second page we have here is the this is what I'm calling the about page but in in these terms it would be I don't know like the title page mixed with uh, dedication kind of special thanks I might put a little dedication in there um, it's only a comic well I shouldn't say only a comic but you know it's not it's only a small fun comic it's not a big production so uh, you know because there's really amazing comics out there this is only a, a small simple one guy stand you know, one man band kind of uh, comic. So uh, I had another video where I already started on this. I got a phone call and decided to just start over. Um, and what I was saying in that one, I'll say again here, is that I'd asked someone, uh, well, I already made these credits because I had some friends help me with editing and some advice on art. And of course, I want to thanks, uh, special thanks to uh, Tarn and Zach Adams who are the creators of the game that this whole comic is based on. So with that in mind, I had asked uh, Michelle, who helped me with some uh, art advice on the panel layouts and stuff, if she, you know, I want to confirm with her that this is okay, that I'm putting her name on here and stuff. And, you know, of course she said, yeah, that's okay, but you should put me under special thanks and not under credits. And that kind of made sense. I thought that was a reasonable thing to say. So... Um, and, you know, when I came to think of it, these other people here, none of them uh, really belong in the credits, because credits is for the people who made the book. It's not to say they are not credit worthy, of course. Um, you know, they have all my respect, but they uh, don't belong in these credits. It's just inappropriate. <clears throat> so I'm going to put them down here. And, yeah, that's that. That should work. Now, it's a little weird, because all of these are separated, and I have to figure out where each one is to move it. Okay, but I can do this. I can do this. Yeah. So this Bay Games goes down here. Centrally. This is just a web address of each of the people who helped me. And one of them <laughs> is a locksmith. His name is David. And if you are in the uh, Seattle area or outside of Seattle area, I, I don't. I don't remember. Somewhere around Seattle. But you have to see which part of Seattle because he doesn't cover everywhere somewhere around Seattle. Uh, go to his website. It's davidthelocksmith.com. I made his logo for him. And you will find uh, he's a very good locksmith. That's all I can say about that. And I guess it was just kind of funny that he's a locksmith and he helped me do uh, dialogue editing, as I said here, because, well, his English is very good. I have problems with spelling. Now, <clears throat> I'm not a horrible speller, but I'm just not the greatest either. And when it comes to all these rules and grammar and stuff, I know my rules, but I don't follow them all the time. I'm a bit too artsy. I have to go change this. As you can see, I moved this. I want to line things up better. So I moved the guide there, um, but it's not snapping to the guide until I select this. Now, uh, I set it to not snap to guides by default because I got really tired snapping to the guides. Uh, as to how I did that, if you're having the same problem, you have to like write a script to make that work, I think. We have to go into, uh, you have to add some code into the settings. Uh, they have like startup settings. And I think it's called GIMP RC, so G-I-M-P-R-C. That was one of the things that took me a long time to figure out. Like every time I start up the GIMP, I want that to default to not snap to guides. Some of the things like that you cannot change in the settings of GIMP. But, um, yeah, how to say it, like, um, it's 
there's a setting for everything <laughs> let's put it that way but not all of them are in the visual settings in this area here in like preferences not everything's there uh, some of the things you have to set in a there's a text file which you have to open and add some code to it to change the settings so that's what I did for I think that's what I did for that one I'm not 100% sure because uh, there's so many settings it's hard to remember them all um, this did not work out perfect because I want a little bit more space here I might even yeah that'll work that'll actually work like that that'll give me plenty of space because there's not enough space between the credits and special thanks and you'll see why in a minute <clears throat> okay one of my major annoyances with uh, text in GIMP actually I think that's just enough space here yeah one of my major annoyances here with the GIMP is that when you're typing text into a text area you you can't hit a hotkey for anything because it'll type it basically <laughs> so imagine like I'm typing in uh, I typed in what I want to type and then I just want to hit like you know the hotkey to save well instead of actually saving it's going to actually type that whatever my hotkey was into the text area that's really annoying but I thought about it and what can you do really with that kind of situation because a hotkey technically speaking it's a key you know so it's going to type it in there <clears throat> okay now I have that out of the way. Let's move. Uh, one thing you get these bounding boxes, and you want it to go away uh, when you're when you're looking at things, right? Because I, I don't want that there. That's just there to show that I'm on this layer and it's small. So you always select a layer, like your bottom layer, that you know encompasses the whole thing. You can also turn off that bounding box so it doesn't show when you're selecting layers. But that is, I don't advise it. Let me just say that because it's good to know how big your layers are. Or later on, you'll be wondering why can't I draw outside of this area? And it, it would have been because that layer was too small for the area you're trying to draw in. That's a little bit better. Now you see, I use that guideline there to help me line things up and snap to guide. And uh, the other things are pretty much already in place. Sometimes your eyes will play tricks on you. You'll think it's not aligned very well, but actually it's aligned perfectly. That can be sort of like an optical illusion is uh, how I refer to that situation. I had a problem with clients and we would argue over whether or not something was uh, aligned perfectly. And I would bring out these guidelines or a screen ruler or something like that. And I would uh, show to them, I'd prove to them that it is in fact perfectly aligned. But we both agreed when we looked at it, hmm, yeah, it just seems a little off-centered. So uh, it's just something of an optical illusion. Sometimes because of the, the, the amount of spacing here or the length of, of text and different things, it, it can be wrong. Now I do see there's a, a bit more space in this area than there is in that area. So that's one thing. I don't have a ruler for, well, I could have brought a ruler down. Ah, no, I wouldn't be able to, actually. There'd be no way for me to know except for eyeballing it. I can measure the space from here to there, um, and I'll bet there's a way to do that. At the moment, I'm not, I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not, you know, I don't think it's that big of a thing. Whoops, there we go. Back here, I'm going to move this up a little bit further. Okay, I think, yeah, let me see, space from here to there space from there to there and bring it down a little bit more. You have to touch it at least once before you can move it. Okay. I'm just going to say that's good enough and people you know probably aren't going to spend so much time looking at that right there. There's the little spacing stuff. Uh, to make these things stand out about credits and special thanks I feel as though <clears throat> I could change the color with them. And this is all a part of uh, just being clear about things because uh, let's note what this is about credits and special thanks and you might not even notice this because you know uh, because of the phenomenon I'm about to mention but these are uh, major headers for this page right and then uh, the text under here is just a like dialogue like text not dialogue but just a content text and then we have uh, you know these things here story and art uh, see there goes the problem I can't hit the hotkey while in text mode okay story and art dialogue editing art editing these are like um, subheaders right these are subheaders so the major header here special thanks and then under that we have a dialogue thanks art thanks and you know dwarf fortress is the game thanks 
whatever it is, they're just subheaders. So, but is that coming out very clearly? Yes, it, I, I think it's pretty clear because these about credits and special thanks, they're all in bigger capitalized font and uh, well, you know, basically that's it. And they stand out to the, to the left a bit. But what if to make that even more clear, so it's really easy, to just change the color of these a bit. <clears throat> and then it would really pop out. And we seem to be using this green color in other spots. I'll make sure that the, the, uh, the green is a lighter green. <clears throat> so that stands out against the black background. Right. Whoops. Oh, that covers that whole thing. Oh, that's weird. I didn't mean to do that anyway. Um, I meant to be on special thanks. Okay. So, yeah. You know what I mean. So that just stands out a little bit more. Makes it a little bit more easy, a bit easier to uh, distinguish between those there. I could even go in and do, if I want people to really notice things, have things stand out, I go into a red, light red here. It's actually like pink. Um, oh yeah, wrong one. And that'll make these uh, domain names pop out, which is good for both me and these people. Sort of bring out, bring more attention to the domain names. Oh, I hit the wrong one. And get back on Centralia. Right. Ah, uh, see it's selecting the wrong one. How do I go? Okay, good, that worked. <clears throat> because there is a huge text area overlapping a small one that's inside of it, so it was confused <laughs> as to which one I selected. But if you go select it over here, after you get into text mode, then it works. So what am I looking for? Bay, so I have games, this one, right? So that'll help bring out more attention to those things there. And all the, the little things like that are good design tips, you know, just for text. There's like textual design. This is actually what you call graphic design, in, in my opinion, in many, many ways. We're using the rulers, we're, you know, spacing alignment, fonts, and, uh, you know, coloring of, the, of these things. That's very, very much within the graphic design field, not to say that's all that graphic design is, but it's a part, a major part of it. <coughs> now, I'm no expert on that. Um, so that's that, and I feel satisfied with that page. Now, I, I, it wouldn't kill me to like draw something up here, but I mean, really, it's just to, yeah, I don't get carried away. It, it doesn't have to be an ornate piece of art, right? It's just a title page. Uh, and then we have this page here. So I'm going to change some text on here. It's my friend who happens to be the editor and locksmith over here. He said, processing, oh no, wait, the text, I actually have to change is over here, sorry. Um, yeah, it's uh, the Bastabak is a story which is based on a game session of the game Dwarf Fortress. Now here's where the mistake comes. Dwarf Fortress is a randomly generated game with new challenges and characters created each time you play. Now if you're not careful with your English, you might interpret this as meaning that the game itself is randomly generated, <laughs> which is kind of funny. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do is say that uh, Dwarf Fortress. We're just going to have to change it. Dwarf Fortress, game with new challenges. Uh, the game, Dwarf Fortress, randomly generates new challenges and characters each time you play. Uh, so I have to take out which one? Uh, Dwarf Fortress randomly generates new challenges and characters. Uh, take out created. That's a redundant verb now each time you play. The name of the tor the name of the territory the dwarfs settled in on this particular game session was the Bastabak. Why not put that in quotes? And so the story began. That's very simple, simple English. Um, what happens with a spelling um, and this might be someplace that Photoshop is better, I don't know. Um, well, there, yeah, when it comes to text, uh, Photoshop reigns supreme. Uh, well, maybe it doesn't reign supreme. Maybe it has some competitors, but it's uh, far above and beyond GIMP. That's one place where GIMP just simply must concede. Text in GIMP is not good. They're working on it. I wonder now uh, GIMP uh, 2.9 is out, and which is leading to 2.10. 
2.10. It might be much better. I uh, have to try and uh, try and download that and see. Uh, it's not available. Uh, I couldn't find it anyway. I just read about it. So that's changed. <coughs> And uh, that's advice, too, also, when you're making a book like this. Get an editor. Get a couple friends or strangers online, uh, some bum on the street. Drag them up to your house and make them read it. And, uh, even though you might have the best English in the world, um, well, for me, in this situation, uh, first of all, I had like a lot of typos because uh, there's no spell check when you're in text mode in the GIMP, sadly. Maybe there's a plug-in for that. I'll have to check. And... Uh, and also, you just make grammar mistakes and stuff. Uh, so somebody else can can always help you uh, point that stuff out. So now on this page, this is just an intro, a little little intro. We already have an about page. And this page just kind of introduces introduces the book because I don't want people to just jump into it and not really have a feeling of where we are, why we're here. I want to have a little bit of background. So that's what this page does. And I don't think I have any editing to do here, but it's also just another type of preliminary page before you dive into the comic. Um, and, and so to, to have something like that. Oh, I might also add a dedication page, but we got a lot of pages already. I don't know. We'll see. Once upon a time, it says, on a computer somewhere on Earth, there was a guy playing a game known as Dwarf Fortress. Processing thousands of operations per second, the game randomly generated a new world and also randomly generated a team of digital dwarfs who would make a new fortress to call their home. With little more than management instructions from the game player, the dwarfs forged themselves a new story. And it went something like this. And then da 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 da, you go into the page. And it's really cool <coughs> uh, the way that it comes in to uh, the next page from that. Uh, or at least I felt happy with it. I made a little joke here, you know, the game is an alpha, or this comic is an alpha, because the game is always an alpha. It's been an alpha for like, I don't know, like 10 years or something. Um, let me, oh yeah, actually, literally <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> I just remembered while I said that, that like somebody was just saying it's about to be Dwarf Fortress's 10th birthday, um, and they're going to uh, make a whole bunch of crown drawings for those guys. Uh, okay, so let me see. I wanted to show you, with that done, i to get up here, I want to show you how that worked. Uh, actually, let me save this and export each one of these. I have hotkeys for this. I do control, save, oh that doesn't work. I have a hotkey for this, it's an asterisk key. Don't ask why. Um, oh no, not, not PNG, JPEG. I switch it to JPEG because it's going to be online, and so it's better if uh, I'm going to put things online for slower speeds. JPEGs compress a little bit better. Um, it's not necessarily better. You can use PNG. I don't know. I just I, I had to deal with slow internet speeds myself for a long time, and so I like to be considerate of people with slower speeds. So let me go back to these pages here and we'll see after I delete this will open slowly if it opens at all hello yeah there it is I have to delete this PNG okay so there's the cover page I just want to see I want to show how this um, this comes in you know you start off here it's very smooth I think it looks good it's all nice and centered and you go on the first page subtle little bit of color you can read it if you want to some people don't like to read and this page really makes you feel like we're doing something now it's colorful there's a little smiley face in the background so this should be tempting to read whereas this is just you know credits a lot of people have a sort of an instinct to say oh yeah yeah credits just go buy it but at least it's colorful hopefully make people stop and look for a minute and then we go on here and you start reading and just like this, you know, as I read it out, with little more than management instructions from the game player, the dwarves forged themselves a new story, and it went something like this. And then, bam, you get this nice big colorful full spread right there. And, you know, I just think that's a nice contrast. You start off real simple with the text and stuff. And then this, right, you got a lot of color, color and detail and all that stuff. Of course, subsequent pages are a lot more simple. But that first impression can be lasting, and so that's another point to make. I think the first page, 
should be uh, always be a very nice one. I noticed that with a lot of comics, the first page, you know, it really sp a good splash page, really, uh, really is a good way to go. I think so. It's kind of like the first impression. So do that there. That's all I had for this video, this episode, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Learn a thing or two, and listen, you know, to me rambling on. I know it's very long gets boring sometimes but it can also be entertaining have a good day see you later